hail the clicks crew all right guys today we have some exciting fantastic four hero clicks previews for you uh to discuss i know that i'm a little bit late to the party with these uh, again but uh, i like to try to get multiple uh preview sets in here uh so these ones come from uh two clicks from ko and comicbook.com uh if you go to the mr clicks flicks facebook page um you go there you uh, can get a link to the original source if you want to see those um but uh, I'm having them here in this video for you so that you can get my thoughts on them, uh, discuss general playability. Uh, but these look great. Uh, Fantastic Four set drops July 22nd, uh, 2020. Uh, so make sure to uh, go to your local game store and place your pre-orders uh, today if they're still taking them. Uh, also visit uh, shop.wizkids.com if you don't have a local comic book store uh, because they are taking pre-orders there. and. This is a good time to let you know that Mr. Clicks Flicks is sponsored by Lucky Dice Cafe out of Huntsville, Alabama, home of the ROC. No matter if you're in the United States or around the world, Lucky Dice Cafe has a winning role for our gaming needs. You can visit them at LuckyDiceCafe.com or on their Facebook page using the link found in the description of this video. Mr. Clicks Flicks is also sponsored by TrollandToad.com, one of the largest online gaming retailers. Visit TrollandToad.com and use the promo code MrClicksFlix for 5% off your Hero Clicks order today. Uh, so speaking of that uh, Troll and Toad stuff, uh, they don't do pre-orders there, um, but they are uh, currently offering an extra 25% trade-in credit uh, for your Hero Clicks uh, if you take store credit. So something to consider if you're trying to pick these up. And also, uh, thanks to them, I am currently giving away a uh, entire brick of Fantastic Four Hero Clicks. Uh, so check out the YouTube card now uh, for that contest. And then also uh, stop on over at patreon.com slash MrClicksFlix, where if I hit my Patreon goal of $300 in total pledges per month this month, I will give away exclusively to Patreon an additional brick of Fantastic Four Hero Clicks, and that's in addition to all the other cool stuff that they get over there. So that's enough of me blabbing. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the previews. Uh, so up first, we have Punisher number 31B in the set. Uh, he has the Frightful Four, Cosmic Herald, and Robot keywords. Um, and as you can see here, he is the Uncommon Prime in the set. This is not Frank Castle in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Uh, this is a Minion of Galactus type guy. Uh, so he has uh, two traits and a special on his movement. His first trait is Frightful Four, Strange, heavy armored being, half robot, half alive. Friendly characters with the Frightful Four keyword deal penetrating damage to opposing characters with two action tokens. Penetrating damage is good. Uh, these Frightful Four guys, uh, if you've seen some of my previous uh, videos on this set, they seem like they're going to have a lot of synergy together. Uh, so I like this uh, a lot. There's a lot of things, at least in this set, that seem like they're going to have two action tokens. So I'm betting you're going to get a lot of use out of that, at least in Sealed. Uh, the other trait is Merciless Hardcore Mass of Mayhem, Close Combat Expert, Colossal Stamina, Giant Reach 2, uh, all that's good, uh, Close Combat Expert traded is good, Colossal Stamina is also good, that gives you the option to uh, take an extra uh, action if you really need to uh, push the advantage, uh, and then Giant Reach 2, you'd be surprised how many people uh, get caught with uh, Giant Reach. Uh, special on his movement is he's unstoppable charge flurry uh, so he's got two different point lines 125 points and 75 points he has the power cosmic team ability again power cosmic team ability is listed right on the card for easy reference i really like that WizKids kids uh, started doing this in this set i really hope that they continue to do this uh, i think it was a really good move for them at 125 points he has a zero range 10 movement with that special and the flight ability, 11 attack, 18 defense, invincibility, 4 damage. And then at 75 points, he has a 9 movement with hypersonic speed, 11 attack, 18 defense, impervious, 3 damage. Uh, it's tough to tell um, which one you would pick for this. I think uh, really solid secondary attacker uh, at 75 points if you wanted to, to use him with that hypersonic speed. Um, if you don't really have too much else on your team going on, um, then I could see running them at 125. Um, so that you have somebody that's able to basically deal out 12 damage, uh, possibly penetrating damage, and they can't be outwitted. I could see definitely running him. Uh, if you're using him in constructed, uh, probably just going to be using him at 75 points uh, and trying my best to take advantage of his frightful four trait. 
Um, but yeah, this is a pretty solid figure overall. And then you see at the end of his dial, uh, he gets that 12 attack with uh, steel energy that he can use in conjunction with his flurry to heal up a, a few clicks. So this is a good figure. Next up is Silver Surfer, number 47A in the set. He has the Annihilators, Codex, Defenders, Fantastic Four, Cosmic, and Herald keywords. Uh, I don't know what Codex is, so you guys let me know in the comments below uh, what team that is. I don't remember that at all. Uh, he's got a trait, a special on his movement, and a special on his attack. His trait is Dawn Greenwood, Ordinary Girl from Earth. At the beginning of the game, generate a Dawn Greenwood bystander. Uh, and we'll get into what uh, she does uh, here in a minute. Uh, then she has this special, uh, he has this special on his movement called Anywhere and Everywhere Hypersonic Speed. When Silver Surfer uses it after resolutions, you may choose a character he hit and move or move through. The chosen character gains a mobile until your next turn. That's big um, because uh, sometimes giving a character a mobile uh, makes it so they can't retaliate or they have to stand there for the follow up. Uh, so that is uh, really huge. Uh, so as long as you hit them or moved through them uh so you could uh, conceivably hypersonic through somebody uh not hit them hit somebody else and then give the the character you move through the immobile so that they have to stay there uh which is really clutch uh, i like being able to do multiple things to a team in one turn so that's really good uh, then the special on his attack is I only attack to defend if free choose a standard attack power an opposing character within eight squares can use Silver Surfer can use that power until your next turn. So we've got sort of a pseudo pick a power here. It's eight squares. It says nothing of line of fire. So I'm inclined to believe that, um, you know, doesn't matter. Uh, you can use as long as uh, they're within eight squares, you can uh, select a power they can use. Uh, so as far as Dawn Greenwood goes, uh, she has a trait, a special on her attack, and a special on her damage. Uh, her trait is, I have to leave you now. When Dawn Greenwood is KO'd by an opponent's attack, modify Silver Surface combat values plus one for the rest of the game. That's pretty good. Um, and then uh, special on her attack is, I might have gotten in over my head. Power if Dawn Greenwood is within four squares of an opposing character, place Silver Surfer adjacent from elsewhere on the map okay so that's pretty good there um so the, there's going to be some cool stuff we'll talk about here in a minute where you could exploit that then the special on her damages i don't know how to feel about you norn enhancement perplex but only to target a character named silver surfer all those are good uh so what i'm thinking about uh you could do with her is uh basically you spawn her at the beginning of the game uh and then you uh, figure out a way to get her across the board with somebody that's a really good support piece. Then you have your two support pieces across the board that are outside of a range that uh, Silver Surfer could do. Then uh, you can uh, give her this power action. Well, now that I just read it, uh, you can't do it that way. But uh, anyway, you could technically TK her out power action. That's how you get this done now that I've remembered how to play. Uh, you TK her out, give her a power action, uh, place him, uh, so you get basically an extra six range uh, on your hypersonic speed, which is good. Uh, so you can play him with two different point lines, 150 points and 75 points. Uh, he's got an eight range single target, which is really long in today's game, uh, so that's good there. Uh, at the 150 points, he has a 12 movement with that special and the flight ability, 12 attack with that special. 18 defense, invincibility, 4 damage with probability control. Then 75 points, he has an 11 attack, I'm sorry, 11 movement with that special, 11 attack with the special on the attack, 17 defense with invulnerability, and 3 damage with shape change. Uh, I like both point lines a lot. Depends on what you pull on your booster as to what you're playing. Uh, I think the, the, the extra 75 points around at 150 is actually worth it uh, this time. You're getting four clicks, two of which are invincible. Um, so that's good there. Uh, but if you pull something else in your pack, uh, I could definitely see him running him as a really good secondary attacker at 75 points. Uh, and then you also have uh, to take into account the Dawn Greenwood token, which again, uh, you know, you, I'd use my perplex as best I could uh, for like a turn, uh, have her get uh, KO'd uh, by an opponent's attack, uh, do your best to tie him up with her, and then uh, 
I would uh, just have my plus uh, one to all stats on Silver Surfer. I think that would be a good strategy for her, uh, for him. But uh, yeah, I like both point lines on this one again. Uh, and as, if you've watched the channel before, it's not very often I like both point lines. And here we are, two figures in a row. I think both point lines are really solid. Next up is Ghost Rider. Uh, so this is the non-prime version of uh, my exclusive preview of the prime version. Uh, so she is number 53A. She has the, uh, I think that says uh, Cabal. I'm not sure though. Uh, it, this is small and kind of fuzzy. Uh, Fantastic Four, uh, Mystical, and Monster keywords. Uh, she has a trait and special on her defense. Uh, her trait is temporary sent by Johnny Blaze, King of Hell. When Ghost Rider would be KO'd for the first time, instead turn her to a click number from 1 to 5. The next time she takes damage from an opponent's attack, KO her protected pulse wave. So that's really cool there. Um, basically, it saves you from being KO'd. You get to turn her to a uh, different click number and as we'll see when we look at the dial, it's basically you can pick you know, do you want to be a ranged attacker or a close attacker? And you can get the the best uh, that you think you can for that. Uh, then she has the special on her defense, the Guardian Phasma. Defend, energy shield, deflection, toughness, willpower. Adjacent friendly characters of equal or lower points that can uh, or that share a keyword with Ghost Rider can use energy shield deflection. Um, so that's really good there. You're giving everybody a plus two defense at range is good. Um, I have no arguments with that. This this seems like a really solid figure so far, uh, for at least monster and mystical. As if they didn't already have enough going for them. Let's just give them a plus two defense for range. Uh, she has uh, she's fifty points. Comes with a four range single target. Starts off with a nine movement with charge, eleven attack, quake, eighteen defense with that special three damage. And then uh, you can see on her second click, uh, she has very similar stat line except she has an eight movement with running shot, uh, but she still has that special. So anyway, what you do is you you know you play your game. You're trying not to get her KO'd, but she happens to get KO'd. You can bring her back on her last uh, on a click uh, number from one to five and uh, get the power set that you need to get the job done so hopefully you can KO somebody. Uh, but then as soon as she takes damage from an opponent, it's over. Um, you gotta do something else. Uh, I like the sculpt on it. I don't know if this is the exact same sculpt from a couple years ago from the um, from the uh, the US Nationals, I think, is is when they, they debuted it, but the, uh, the convention exclusive. I, th I think this is the same sculpt as the convention exclusive, and that's not a bad thing, because I had that sculpt, and it was it was really cool looking in hand, so I'm happy to see that it's getting reused again, if that is, in fact, the same one. Next up is Blastar, number 59 in the set. Been a while since we've seen him. I think the last time we might have saw him was Galactic Guardians, something like that. But uh, anyway, he's got the Frightful Four, Negative Zone, Cosmic Ruler, and Warrior Keywords. Number 59 in the set, if I didn't say that already. He is a super rare. Has a trait, special on his movement, and attack. His trait is the Frightful Ruler of Balor. Force Blast, super strength. Uh, so that's really good there. Something to point out too that I uh, forgot to mention is that he does have improved targeting uh, shoots out of adjacency. Uh, so that is something you could use there for uh, Force Blast. Nah, maybe not Force Blast. He's got other things that you can definitely use it for there. Um, so the special on his movement is Concussive Flight, uh, Concussive Blast Flight, um, Charge, Running Shot, Free, Make a Close Attack. That's really good there. Um, we'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, and then uh, his special on his tech is the Living Bomb Burst Energy Explosion. When he uses it, the characters Blastar originally targeted are dealt penetrating damage. Uh, he does have Power Cosmic Team Ability. has two different point lines, 150 points and 75 points. I, I like that they're really... Uh, trying to encourage you to you know either this is your main guy or you still have the option to have uh a really good character on your force in a secondary attacker role so i like i like that they're doing that a lot uh he has at 150 points eight range dual target 10 movement with that special and the flight ability 12 attack with that special 18 defense impervious four damage leadership and then at 75 points he has a nine movement with running shot 11 attack with that special 18 defense invulnerability three damage i like both of these a lot again depends on what you pull in your sealed pack uh, as to what you do um and then uh, as far as constructed 
I could see either way. Uh, I do like how the um, movement power and the uh, the the attack power work in conjunction with each other. Uh, so since he can shoot out of adjacency, what it means is you can basically running shot adjacent to somebody, shoot out of adjacency to somebody else that he could still draw a line of fire to. Now, it's important to know he can't draw a line of fire through that character that he's adjacent to because uh, that would be a different symbol, but he could shoot out of adjacency uh, and then he can make that free close attack uh, against um, th that uh, opposing character. Or which you could do is uh, you could charge in, hit a character, and then make a free close uh, attack follow up. So, yeah, basically you have options on if you're attacking one character twice or two characters once. I really like that a lot. Uh, you only get that option if you play him at 150 points. I could see taking a big advantage in maximizing that uh, for him. Uh, you know, so if you're, you know, your your opponent puts a guy out there. You could, you know, kind of running shot in, energy explosion, a cluster, and then uh, single target the person adjacent. And the important thing, too, is that he has that traded force blast, so you're always knocking people back. Uh, also, the traded super strength, so you always uh, have your options of knocking people back, uh, breaking up formations, getting extra knockback damage, fall damage, stuff like that. This guy's a lot of win in my book. I This is the kind of character I like where, um, yes, he's powerful when you look at him, but there's some little nuances where if you're a really good player, you're going to be able to do a lot of fun things with them that people aren't going to expect, uh, and then it's just going to make them more devastating. Uh, next up is a Chase Figure. This is Maker number 65 in the set. Uh, he has the uh, Cabal, I think, uh, Revenger, Ravagers. Oh, man. Again, it's, it's too small. And Scientist Keywords. Uh, he has uh, improved movement, ignores hindering, improved targeting, ignores hindering. Two traits and a special on his damage. Uh, his first trait is the ultimate elastic body, plasticity, super senses, giant reach four. Uh, so giant reach four is not something that's pretty, uh, very common. So you're definitely catching people with that. Uh, when maker attacks characters he target modify defense minus one for each team ability they can use. Uh, so that's pretty cool there. Uh, I know there's a bunch of figures right now that can use uh, like two team abilities, uh, but even one, just getting that minus one of defense can really help. Uh, then his other trait is, I've been making some new tools. Outwit Perplex, when Maker hits, after resolutions, generate a token that is... Uh, that is copy of equipment object that's equipped to the hit opposing character. That object has max one for each object name and isn't scored. So basically you can make that object again, which is really cool. Um, I, I like that a lot. Uh, and then um, special on his damages, splitting myself apart, shape change, power, generate a maker two by standard max one. So what's a maker two by standard uh, look like? Uh, he has a trait, uh, I'm sorry, special on his damage, which is imperfect clone. Maker may use his outwit perplex and probability control as if he occupied this space. Uh, so that's pretty cool there. It uh, gives you like a, a funny line of fire there, which uh, I'm always good for, for generating odd lines of fire. Uh, so Maker 2 is actually pretty good though. Uh, 8 movement with plasticity, 11 attack, psychic blast, 18 defense with super senses, 3 damage with that special. He has indomitability, 6 range, single target. So that's a good bystander. Uh, Maker himself is 100 points, has a 6 range single target, 8 movement with uh, phasing teleport, 11 attack, psychic blast, 18 defense, mind, uh, mastermind, and indomitability, 3 damage. And this is character selected for hero clicks by um, Arbello Demeco, uh, 2016 Italian Hero Clicks National Championship. Oh, so it's, it's Aurelio Demeco. Aurelio Demeco. I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. I always try to give these uh, champion figures. Uh, I try to name who came up with it. But uh, really cool figure. I like it a lot. Um, I wouldn't be upset to see this as my chase figure. Uh, I think Maker's a cool idea of kind of like an evil Reed Richards doppelganger out there. Um, so definitely uh, going to try to pick this up. And this is actually a really good figure. Next up is Reed Richards Fixer of Universes, number 66. And this is the first time we're seeing a title character 
as a chase figure so I'm excited to see what not only the power of a title character gets but also when you add in the fact that chase figures tend to be just a little bit better um, I'm interested to see what those two powers look like combined uh, so he has Fantastic Four Illuminati and Scientist keywords so good keyword set and I actually this is kind of a basic sculpt but I like it a lot it showcases Reed uh, in his powers um, so uh, he has a trait which is the title character and it says see inside uh, so this is going to come like basically folded in half kind of like a mini book and then you open it up and you see what it is uh, for those of you that don't know what a title character is it's basically planeswalker from magic the gathering where they start with so many points uh, and then you either remove or add them based on things that you do and then you get to do other stuff uh, to in the game uh, mechanics so his title abilities uh, he has three title abilities uh, he starts with no points uh, so his first one is a plus one, which is no more superheroics for a while, just science free. Outwit Perplex, until your next turn, at the end of your turn, heal Reed Richards, fixer of universes, one click, if he targeted one plus opposing characters with Outwit or Perplex this turn. Uh, now, it's important to know that because... Um, if uh, one of the other things to go along with title characters is when a title character activates a plot ability at the end of the turn, if it didn't attack an opposing character, deal it one unavoidable damage. So basically, it makes it so that uh, you can use your outwit and you're not. Uh, um, your, your plot ability, and if you're not attacking, you still. Uh, you're not hurting yourself, basically. So that's cool there. Uh, then his other one is plus zero, uncovering the real source of Doom's power free if Reed Richards' Fixer of Universes occupies an opponent's starting area, generate a Molecule Man bystander max one. Uh, so we'll take a look at what Molecule Man does here in a second. Then he has a, uh, one more uh, title ability, which is a minus one, and it's convincing Owen to rewrite Victor's twisted reality free. If Reed Richards, Fixer of Universes, is adjacent to Molecule Man, roll a d6 for that uh, much unavoidable damage. Uh, deal that much unavoidable damage to the lowest point character on an opponent's force. You choose if it's a tie that's good and that's cool that they put in there that thing where if it's a tie you choose because um there's been cases in the past where if two things are tied the effect basically doesn't activate so this is a cool thing there they're making you work for it and they're giving you that delivery on it uh, so that's cool there so if you roll a six you're doing six penetrating to their lowest point figure um that's just good uh so what's molecule man do uh, so he has a trait, which is, uh, did you bring any food? At the end of your turn, if Molecule Man is outside a starting area, KO him. So uh, that's uh, something to consider there. Uh, he has a 12 range single target, and this is Molecule Man still. Uh, zero movement with sidestep, so he can move two. 12 attack with precision strike. 18 defense with... Um, energy shield deflection three i'm sorry one damage where am i getting three from one damage with uh probability control uh, so that's pretty good there for a bystander that's a really high attack value um so that's good there um yeah all right and then uh we'll take a look at reed's stat line then we'll talk about uh, how i'd go about using them uh, he has the fantastic four team ability again team ability is listed on the card here i'm not gonna belabor it we've gone over it before four range single target 11 movement with leap climb 10 attack 18 defense with toughness 2 damage with leadership only 60 points uh so this guy's bringing a lot to the table um in the form of things that you're not thinking about uh so to start off he has uh you know the leadership so you're getting your plus one and you're removing action tokens then he has uh free outwit and perplex um until the end of your turn uh if, I, if you use its target one opposing character outwit or perplex this turn, uh, you heal the one click that you'd be dealt for, for activating it and not um, attacking. So that's good there. Uh, and then uh, there's this whole thing on getting to the other side of the board. That leaves you 240 points to figure out how you're going to get to the other side of the board uh, and, and wall it off. There are a bunch of maps and a bunch of scenarios that I can think of that we will cover in future videos for that where... Uh, you know, you get them over, you generate your Molecule Man, you deal the six penetrating, then uh, it doesn't seem like you, at any point, you KO, um, you KO Molecule Man unless he's outside the starting area. So that's cool there. So he's always there. So every turn, 
uh, you're able to do that um, that six damage as long as you have the plot points to do it. I think that's really huge. Um, but yeah, this is a really good title character. Uh, as you can see at the end of his dial, uh, he has a 12 attack, 20 defense with uh, super senses. Um, now, I understand poison. There's a lot of ways to get around that, but that's still uh, a really healthy defense there. Uh, so yeah, this is a, a super good chase figure that I would be excited to have. Um, so you guys let me know what your favorite character was in this batch of previews. I always enjoy reading that stuff. Again, uh, check out your local game store for pre-orders on the set. Drops till July 22nd. There are no um, pre-release events for this just because everything is going on. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. As always, please remember that it's something critical miss if you don't have probability control.